first down, they hand off to Marlon Mack. Huge hole, 50-yard line. He's at the 40, still going near sideline. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, and he will score. Touchdown, Marlon Mack. Touchdown, I-N-D-Y. And again, it's picked off. It's Darius Leonard. Leonard with a second INT, and he's streaking down the near sideline. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20. He's going to go. A pick six for the Maniac. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. What is going on, Colts Nation, and welcome back to another episode of the Bring the Juice Colts podcast. Well, the Indianapolis Colts are playoff bound as number seven seed. They will play to the homestanding Buffalo Bills, the 13 and 3 number 2 seed Buffalo Bills. And in order to preview this wild card matchup, thought I'd bring on a Bills YouTuber, Bills podcaster, Mr. Kevin Masseri himself. He hosts the Crowd Assist Pod and Bullet Point 716 Pod, both covering Buffalo sports. Kevin, thanks for coming on, man. How are you doing? Doing well, guys. Thanks for thanks so much for having me. Look forward to this game. I mean, it's one um, but, you know Bills fans have been waiting for, waiting for that opponent, and uh, nothing better than to knock out the Dolphins and and get to see a uh, new face in the Colts. Yeah, we, we do thank you so much from the bottom <laughs> of our hearts for doing that. Uh, I know ex Bills quarterback you. Frank Reich does too. So uh, <laughs> yes, I'm sure yeah. he does. He's, he's got some legacy on this field, guys. I mean, yes, yeah. yes, biggest comeback ever. He's well liked here. I mean, yeah. You know, I, for the most part, he's well liked, and it is it is an interesting little wrinkle um, in this scenario. Absolutely, it, it definitely is, man. So, how are you feeling overall about the Bills so far? Thirteen and three, obviously, awesome record, their best record in a long time. Yep. Um, you guys right now come in at six and a half point favorites. Um, so, how are you feeling about the Bills right now, uh, heading in here to Wild Card Weekend? It's more than this a record for, I think, most Bills fans or Bills Mafia or even media members. 142 points in the last 12 quarters. Uh, it's just absurd. Um, they're playing all three phases. Something, you know, I'm critical of the Bills in some phases defensively is as good as they've been. They've been great in the last few weeks, like really great. I mean, teams are running up pointless statistics on them right now um wait late in games i mean you've seen it in san francisco kind of backdoored in some stats you saw it against uh, miami last week where Tua threw for 380 but was awful um in doing so so some of that stuff's garbage the defense has played a lot better i, I was on them early for for being poor and, and really being an offensive team which is weird for bills fans to say which is new uh yeah. new, new type of scenario here we've never really had we never had andrew luck you know we've never had anything like that before up here so it's completely new scenario um to have that kind of situation i've been critical of the special teams at times but that unit's really good as a couple pro bowlers the rookie kicker has been great um their punter a guy i didn't think should be in the league is now one of the best punters in the league doesn't make any sense um but um he put it inside the one uh it was ridiculous so i mean all three phases are playing really good but the funny part about the bills is they don't need to rely like even if the special teams has a blunder or two um it's th th not like the dolphins where they need that stuff to win a game like they need those punt blocks they need the fake punts uh they need a good kick return the bills are getting that on top of good offensive football so i think it's really weird it's a really weird position for bills fans up here to say they're scoring like this they're number two in offense and <laughs> they run the ball when they need to. That's the thing. You look at the stats and be like, Oh, can they run the ball? Uh, I don't know. They run it when they need to in the fourth quarter, they've been pretty good at running the football. Um, so it's, it's really interesting. And I think the biggest progression up here in Buffalo or any bills fan is the development of Josh Allen. I mean, I know it's beat, you know, the horse is beaten, um, but it's been crazy to see his adjustments at the line of scrimmage. Um, the Titans made a really good adjustment on him. One of his only pretty bad games of the season was against the Titans after, they got everything moved for them um, for COVID and multiple weeks of rest and, and all this stuff. The Bills didn't know who they'd play them or the Colts. The Bills came in flat. They looked awful down there in Tennessee. Um, really their only bad, bad game of the year. And, and Vrabel put on the really crazy dropped, you know, drop 10 zone, really dropped eight or nine into zones, kind of confused Allen a little bit and wasn't great. Figured it out immediately and just, San Francisco tried to do the same. New England tried to do the same, and they got absolutely torched um, after, you know, Allen figured out, you know, kind of some adjustment in those games. So, guys, I mean, it's been a crazy scenario up here in Buffalo. The points are there. There's nothing fluky about this team, whether they're playing um, KC, Indy, Pittsburgh. Uh, it, it's sustainable and something the Bills fans have never seen. They In past teams, they relied on turnovers and things that just aren't necessarily always going to be there if the ball bounces your way or not. Uh, the, the, the offense is very sustainable and they're and they're moving the ball at just such a high clip. 
Yeah, so uh, Cody, right before we get into injuries here, I did want to ask Kevin about Josh Allen a little bit more because you know I was back in October. I know there was I know there was a couple games where Josh Allen didn't yeah. look like the normal Josh Allen we're used to seeing, right? Very inaccurate, making sure. a lot of inaccurate throws, just trying to force things. I mean, obviously that's kind of changed now. We're seeing what this offense can do, and Stephon Diggs is insane. We're going to talk about this offense a little more, but. You know, your quarterback is one of the top four guys to get MVP this year, and they've been playing at such a high level now. Do you do you have any concern at all about Josh Allen with, you know, this one of being his few times actually making it to the playoffs, this yeah. kind of stage, this sort of thing? Do you have concerns that that could impact him, or do you feel he's now comfortable in the system now where you don't really have to worry about that? Yeah, you mentioned it back in October where there was that, okay, big game Tennessee, big game Kansas City, back-to-back games he wasn't great in, four touchdowns, three interceptions, about 400 yards combined in those games. His yards per attempt was down uh, 4.3 in the game against Kansas City. Kansas City had a really good defensive game plan against the Bills, um, backing up that Tennessee game plan. So, yeah, there was a little creep in our minds that, okay, we're playing you know a top two top five teams in the AFC, uh, two top four teams, you know, whatever you want to consider the Titans. Um, and, uh, a little doubt crept there, you know, I was like, all right, is this, you know, 2019 Josh, is this kind of what we're going to see? Um, but he immediately, you know, still some of that weather played a factor in that Kansas city game for yeah. sure. And like, like yeah. I'll say guys, we love weather here in Buffalo. We like bad weather. We like to thrive on it. You know, Frank Gore running against the Colts in the snow and all these other weird scenarios. It's not good for Josh Allen. It isn't good for a really good quarterback to get neutralized by those elements. We saw that against Kansas City. It wasn't. It was this weird rain, even worse than the snow, um, and it really neutralized him. That affected him. It shouldn't have, but it did. So gotcha. little doubt crept in our minds, but he just just completely took that away in the Seattle game, just absolutely burying them for 400 yards and three touchdowns. And then we're like, all right, a previous Bill team would have probably folded against a pretty good Seattle team um, in that situation, and they just didn't. They just they just took it the right way and went about their business, and then that led to a really great comeback to Diggs in Arizona, which led to a luck Chuck Hail Mary ridiculous play that um, <laughs> is talked about here a lot. You know, it's talked about a turning point for this Bills team. They'd have a ten game winning streak, guys, if it wasn't for that one Hail Mary. <laughs> Crazy. Um, and the best part about that, I like to say this on all my shows. It wasn't a Hail Mary call. They called the drag route to Andy Isabella that the Bills cut off and they rushed him out of the pocket. Time had ran out and and um, Kyler Murray didn't even know where where he was at that time. Even Cliff Kingsbury said it was a drag route to Isabella to get out of bounds to maybe to maybe have another shorter play at it. Yeah. Uh, so our three best defenders are back there. You have Trey White, Micah High, Jordan <laughs> Poyer. There's just nothing. It's yeah. just it's it's just stupid. Yep. Um, none of that made sense. But outside of that, it was a good turning point. And we saw Josh Allen as a really big turning point for him, really come in, dominate San Francisco, dominate Denver, dominate New England, dominate Miami, dominate Pittsburgh. Um, the only team that has really kind of got to him a little bit, like I said, beside Kansas City and Tennessee, a little bit with the Chargers. Outside of that, uh, he's been really good down the stretch, guys. I think some of that hero ball we're, we're not seeing as much where he's jittery and tossing it backwards and lateraling it in the playoffs against Houston and doing some crazy things. Um, he showed that he has a talent last year in Houston. Got this it. year, he showed that that talent's now um, really divine, defined. We go into hours about how he got better. Uh, that's not useful. Um, but... Um, <laughs> You know, he changed sort of strolling mechanics. Jordan Palmer charted everything, you know, whatever. Um, but I think Bills fans are, are all in. You know, they bodied the media who said that he'd be terrible and Darnold's way better and Josh Rosen, um, I, even Baker Mayfield, he's way better than. And yeah, I mean, having a top two MVP candidate is something that I think most Bills mafia, um, beside Rodgers, I think a lot of people still have him as number two. So we're going to see all that plays out, but he needs to prove it against a good Colts team. I mean, that's straight up what it comes down to. It's probably one of the best seven seeds we'd ever see. Um, and of course, last year would have been a bad Pittsburgh. I tweeted this. It would have been a bad Pittsburgh team as the seven seed last year without a quarterback right. um, against the Chiefs, the eventual Super Bowl winners. And the Bills, unfortunately, scored a really good seven seed this year. So it's 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 the, for the first time that a two hasn't had a bye in, in since the new playoff format. So it's right. kind of bad luck. They should be on a bye right now, but good for the Colts for, um, you know, really getting in there and being a, and being a, a threat as a seven seed, which 
I don't think in the NFC it's a threat. Yeah, right, right. AFC is a lot stronger this year than the NFC is. But let's get into some of these injuries here. Yep. Um, I'll t- just kind of list some of the Colts that's going over right now. Uh, people who did not practice today were DeForest Buckner, Will Holden, Philip Rivers, and Rocky Asin. DeForest Buckner with the ankle, it's been kind of bothering him for a couple weeks. They've really been limiting him at practice. It's not going to be something that's going to keep him out of the game. They just ultimately don't practice him that much anymore to keep that at a bay. Uh, Will Holden, not sure whether or not he's going to be playing or not. He wasn't our left tackle last week, so I don't anticipate it. Rivers is going to play regardless. That toe has been bothering him since the middle of the season, and it's not slowed him down. And Rocky Asin with a concussion, uh, whether or not he plays yet or not, I'm not sure. That's still up in the air. But TJ Carey today was a limited participant, ankle, shoulder, probably not something that will keep him out. Jonathan Taylor was limited today with a shoulder injury. Kind of weird how that one worked. I mean, I figured it would have been a back injury the way he was carrying this offense uh, on Sunday. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> but um, oh. see what I did there? Hey, I got you. Hey, I can make them. Um, but yeah, he's limited participant today. I'm sure they're probably just uh, limiting his work uh, today because of what he had to do Sunday. And Kari Willis also in concussion protocol, but he was a full participant today. They did think he's going to be back and ready to go for that game, which is pivotal because Kari, when he was out against Pittsburgh, our secondary got infinite, infinitely worse, and they and our secondary wasn't as good this last week. Also, when Kari Willis was out, so really good if we can get him back. And then you obviously know a little more about the state of which these players are in, so I'll just kind of list them. Cole Beasley with a knee injury did not practice today. Stephon Diggs limited participant with an oblique injury. Um, John Feliciano a full participant today with a knee. Jake Fromm, not not injury related, limited participant. Reggie Gilliam, uh, knee hamstring was a full participant, and Isaiah McKenzie, the one that was like torching the <laughs> Dolphins uh, the other day, yeah. ankle injury, limited participant. So, any of those guys potential to not play, or is this just just uh, yeah, we'll, protocol? We'll start minored out to to severe. Isaiah McKenzie once again maybe should join Jonathan Taylor with the back injury. Um, absolutely just dominated Miami himself probably will be the bill slot receiver, um, on Saturday. So something to watch out for a guy. They're really confident and he's playing really good football. Can't believe Denver would have let him go a couple of years ago. And the bills kind of hung on to him and said, we're going to develop him and have done a great job at it. Um, Reggie Gilliams, our backup tight end, a guy they really love in special teams. A guy that does contribute to our special teams unit is our second to third string tight end, depending on the formation Fromm's our COVID quarterback. Um, a guy that they said early on, way before a lot of issues in August, they're like, Jake Fromm's making our team. He's our he's our COVID quarterback. We're not going to play a receiver at quarterback. It's not going to happen. So he's a guy that they take lots of precautions to keep him away from the team. Um, if something ever happened, you'd see Jake Fromm in those games. Um, John Feliciano's fine. He came went out with a little tweak last week. Stephon Diggs, there's no reason he wouldn't play. That's just kind of maybe a half rest day. Keep him keep monitoring him. Um, I mean, came out absolutely fine. Took a cheap shot by Christian Wilkins. That's what that injury is about. As he was deliberately sliding and got crushed from behind ridiculous um ridiculous cheap shot he took but luckily that ended up being he ended up going back in and being more than efficient um, and then Cole Beasley's the big one guys he's the one that got hurt against New England in the fourth quarter when they were up double digits didn't make sense why he they took everyone else out and of course he gets hurt it's the only mistake they've made so far on the front of this shouldn't have been in the game especially when you have a guy like McKenzie and Gabriel Davis and receivers that are more than competent to make sure they're getting the job done um, there was no reason for him to be in that game, maybe getting him some more reps. It was not the best decision they've made. I don't think you'll see him. Um, I think that that is a precedent by a couple of things. That's the Kenny still signing that you'll see. Um, he's on the practice squad. I bet he'll be active with the two, um, roster addition, uh, practice squad additions. Um, and I think that that's a precedent by how well McKenzie played. They're thinking, Hey, we'll have an extra day of rest because whoever wins this game, We'll have an extra day of rest over their opponent because um, both of them are playing on Sunday, the other two uh, AFC games. Um, well, I guess, I mean, I guess the Chief, uh, the Colts would have to go to the Chiefs, right? That's what would happen. If yeah, they, that's what yeah, would yeah, end up happening. Yeah. So that's, yeah, okay. So that that's moot for them. Um, so they're thinking, you know, we got to play the long game here. 
is the difference between Beasley not at full strength and McKenzie. Got to make that decision, guys. And I do think they'll err on McKenzie and Kenny Stills as a potential replacement than they will force um, Beasley with his knee injury. Because quite frankly, it's not going to be the difference between McKenzie and Beasley that's going to going to lose the Bills a game. Um, so that's kind of what they're thinking. If they're losing, it's going to be somewhere else. Um, so that that's kind of what they're thinking there. So the injury report's pretty clean, and they really only have Cody Ford, a guy who wasn't playing good anyways. Uh, they've had better line play since he's been out. He's really their only injury so far this season. Hmm. Okay. It's good to know. Good to some injury updates. Definitely we'll want to monitor those as the week progresses here. But let's get in now to some of these statistics here. So we'll start with the Colts passing offense. So the Colts come in right now with the 10th best passing offense or ninth, yeah, 10th best passing offense. Phillip Rivers has been playing really well beyond this last week. Wasn't his best performance, but you know, throughout 16 games. Rivers has had a really, really good season, over 4,000 yards, over 20 touchdowns, really has cut down on the interception numbers as well. Um, and, and keep in mind, like, this team, a lot a lot more has been more run-oriented recently. So, um, and, and then looking kind of at the Buffalo defense a little bit, they come in as the 13th best pass defense, obviously missing Tredavious White last week. Uh, but, you know, now he's going to come back for this game. So my question to you here, Kevin, is, what do the Colts offense need to do? Phillip Rivers, T.Y. Hilton, all these guys. What do they need to do if they want to have success against a pretty good secondary in Buffalo, some pass rushers, all that stuff? What do the Colts need to do to, I don't want to say expose, because it'll probably be hard to do that, but to take advantage potentially um, and give them the leg up in this game in terms of passing? Yeah, it's the side of the ball that um, might need to keep up, right? I mean, it's and it's the side of the ball that's vulnerable vulnerable for the bills um to, as much as you can that they have the luxury usually to be able to take some risks and to take some challenges drop into zones play soft coverages because quite frankly they just can't allow hail mary again um so you, you'll see in this game that they'll drop into zones they've already admitted that it's not Tua. um you know they're not going to be able to confuse philip rivers anywhere on the field they've, they've said as much um, you know, they really talk super highly of Philip Rivers here. McDermott's generally really, really positive about the other team. Like he will never give you a sound bite um, to put in your locker room. He's going to tell you the best quarterback in the league. I like that, though. Um, Belichick got into a little bit of trouble saying that he wasn't buying into the Josh Allen hype. Didn't go well. Um, McDermott is definitely not intentionally. He's rarely going to give you a sound bite like that. Um, so, you know, he's very, very, very complimentary of Philip Rivers and what he's able to accomplish. I've watched Philip Rivers in our stadium. Uh, it was 2000. I just looked at this up 16 uh, when he was with the Chargers came in and just ripped through this air and this 40 mile an hour wind. People were holding the goalposts um, during field goals and extra point tries and Philip Rivers took care of it. So, you know, those are the kind of things they'll be putting on film, even though it's a different team, different scheme. He is able to accomplish something. So quick throws to the running backs. Bills, the Bills will, and it's it's a big asset for the Colts. Bills might struggle a little bit there. Matt Malone is a great coverage linebacker, so is Tremaine Edmonds. They'll complement their ability to play all three downs for both of them. Um, that's something that Leslie Frazier just said. I think you still need to take it. I still think you need to take those short throws. The Bills will give you stuff. They will do that because they're 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 very complementary of their offense. They'll give you that. They're going to take away deep throws. Um, I think that the best matchup is whoever Levi Wallace is guarding. He's my least favorite player on the Bills defense. I think he struggles. You'll see Josh Norman um, sub in there, but they like him. He's such a good zone corner. He's lanky. He can break to the ball. He will make some splash plays occasionally. Josh Norman's playing good too. I still think the matchup's there. It's, you know, I don't know. Um, who they're, I mean, I would imagine you see T.Y. against um, Trey White, and Trey White's been really good in his one-on-one -on -one coverages, though I'm not sure Trey White's going to follow him. So if you have a matchup advantage there, that's something I would absolutely take care of. The Bills cornerback, too, is the weakest link on their on their defense. Um, and they do they do protect him, though, with good safety play. Yeah, we, we figured that was going to be the difficult part because you guys definitely do have a lot of takeaways. Colts and the Bills, one of the best teams in the NFL when it comes to uh, creating takeaways or one of the top, I believe it's top five for both teams. But in regards to this rushing attack, so we talked about the passing attack. Let's talk about the rushing attack here. So Jonathan Taylor over the last five weeks outside of Derrick Henry has been the best rushing, uh, has been the best rushing threat in the NFL. And it, there's no one even close. Those two are just on a different pedestal right now. And, you know, you saw what Jonathan Taylor has been able to do, racking up 100 yards, 150 yards, 250 yards. 
the kid just is getting better and better each week. And right now the bills sit at what appears to be the 17th best rushing defense. Yep. It's appears to be the weakest link. Uh, I wouldn't even call it a weak link, but it's the weakest link with you guys. I mean, you're giving up compared to the Colts who are giving up 90 yards per game. You guys are giving up 119 yards a game. So 29 extra rushing yards there. Um, so what, what do you guys feel uh, mm -hmm. you have to do to stop this? Cause it's not just been, you know, Jonathan Taylor, Naheem Hines has been doing very well and out of the backfield as well. And this offensive line, it was looking really bad early in the season, but this offensive line, despite missing Anthony Costanzo, their left tackle is still pushing people and making it look really easy right now. How do you think you stack up against this Colts rushing attack? Yeah. And the, and, and Leslie Frazier was just on complimenting how good that, especially not taking away from the tackles, but especially how good the interior line has been. And the bills are interested in Jonathan Taylor. It's pretty well known here that he was, he didn't obviously fall, but if he was going to fall in the second round a little bit, the, it, the Bills were going to take him over AJ Epinesa, a mm. rotational defensive end that's been coming on um, and playing a little bit better against the run, um, beginning after the pass, got a start um, against Miami. He's been playing good football, but they would have preferred to have Jonathan Taylor of evidence by them sweating out Zach Moss for a few, uh, for maybe 20 to 30 picks to hit their third round. They got lucky and got Moss, so it took the sting away a little bit. Um, but Jonathan Taylor was a guy they scouted hard. They won't admit it. They, they'll, they'll admit how good he is. They won't admit how much they want him. Uh, they wanted him bad. They, it was a co perfect compliment to Devin Singletary. Devin Singletary does a lot of things well, nothing great. Um, and they really would have liked to have that that preferred 1A type of back in Jonathan Taylor and then have Devin Singletary as their 1B. They, they won't admit it, but that's where they were targeting in the second round for sure. It was pretty well known here. So uh, he's a good player. The Bills are going to gap integrity is a word we've, hear, we've heard here all week. And pretty much, as you mentioned, maybe our weakest link. So it's something, you know, they're not going to sit there and harp on the positives all the time. So it's something we've heard a lot of gap integrity, gap integrity, gap integrity. And that's it. I mean, the best part is Matt Milano is healthy. Jermaine Edmonds is healthy. The run defense has been way better. And, and the numbers are a little skewed by New England's running the ball every play in two games. Um, so the numbers are a little bit skewed. And teams can't throw on the Bills. So you've had that issue. <clears throat> at least throw when it matters. Um, so you're seeing backdoor throws and backdoor statistics, but they struggled against the run. They played re Henry really well, and I'm going to imagine that they're going to use that game plan. And, and Tannehill took advantage of it. The Bills were stopping the run, um, and Tannehill took advantage of of stacking Bach as the Bills have admitted they might go A.J. Klein as the third linebacker this week rather than Ter uh, Taron Johnson. So, um, you know, we're going to see what they do. I'm going to imagine that's their number. If they're going to go down, they want to go down stopping the run. Um, and if you're able to beat Levi Wallace on the outside with some of your secondary receivers, that's where they'll want to go down and they'll say, you know what, we, we stopped their best. We did what we needed to do. They took advantage somehow and, and, and picked on Levi. Uh, we weren't able to make an adjustment. They'd rather say that than say, well, we stopped their passing game, but we got ran all over. Um, so I'm going to imagine you're going to see McDermott's a good defensive coach. It's one place I'm not as worried about, believe it or not. Um, he's going to make the adjustments. They played Watson really well in the playoffs last year. He will, and he always does good against running running backs that he when he needs to. Where McDermott will struggle is against guys that he's not really as sure about, like the Miles Gaskins of the world and and these other players. He's like, I don't care about Miles Gaskin. That means they're not throwing the ball. Uh, they're not going to keep up with us. But in this case, they have respect the heck out of Jonathan Taylor. Know how good he is. How good that line is. They're going to do anything they can to stack it and be like, well, if Philip Rivers can beat us outdoors in January, they had a good game plan then. Yep, I agree. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's flip it over to the other side now and kind of look at this Bills offense versus this Colts defense. So right now the Colts have overall the eighth best defense. Uh, where they struggle and have recently struggled is pass defense. Have had some injuries, like I mentioned, Kari Willis, Rocky Asen this last week. Um, but they come in 20th in terms of pass defense, which is absolutely crazy because at one point they were top five. Uh, so they, that just kind of shows you how much they've struggled in terms of passing yardage. And like you said, passing yardage is a little bit of a skew sometimes. Yeah. I mean, you play the Texans twice in three weeks and only allow 20 some points. I mean, you'll take that every day, but, yep. um, but anyway, you know, that is a st statistic so far and, and that is the bill's strength. You already mentioned Josh Allen. We've talked about him a lot. Um, and just this receiving core as well is just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, right now Buffalo comes in as a third best passing offense. So this is going to be a really tough test for this cold secondary that has struggled a lot recently um, in terms of yardage allowed, but, you know, the fortunate part for what the Colts do is they've really been doing a good job of getting after the passer recently, especially to DeForest Buckner has done a really, really good job. He had two sacks again uh, this past Sunday. So DeForest Buckner, 
He actually set the Colts franchise record in terms of sacks from an interior defensive lineman. So we just know uh, how great of a, I guess you call a first round pick because the Colts <laughs> traded that 13th pick, how great <laughs> he is. Um, and the Colts have some other pieces that have started to come on. Kamoko Ture had a sack, his first sack of the year. Good to see him starting to get it up. So the Colts have some, some players that potentially can get after the passer. So what do the Colts need to do in order to, you, you can't really slow Josh Allen down. Like, but what do the Colts need to do to get him off the field as much as possible and give their offense uh, the greatest chance to potentially, you know, run the clock out, do whatever they need to do to limit him in this dangerous passing attack? Don't blitz him. So the number one thing is, um, <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Indianapolis don't have to worry about that. We, we, Indianapolis, that. Indianapolis blitz is the third least <laughs> sure, yeah, of any team in the NFL. So we re- we rarely blitz anybody it's, because we're confident in our front four to get <laughs> pressure. So yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> a, it wouldn't work. Usually, that means you're in a cover, you know, in a cover man, or you're in, you're in cover one, or I mean, I don't. It depends, you know, what you're running out of that blitz. Doesn't work out though. If you go into any type of man coverage off of a blitz, Josh Allen will absolutely torch you. It's something that I think we saw a little bit on film with New England. Try to put a little bit of that on film because he likes to blitz younger quarterbacks. Worked like a little bit, and then Josh Allen made adjustments, and every team since has been absolutely torched um, by get, by the blitz. You need to get pressure on him. Um, but he's scary because he'll make plays with his legs and he'll start to do it. So that's that's what's scary about Josh is that he can make a lot. I mean, a young Ben Roethlisberger or whatever example, Cam Newton or whatever, when he was good, whatever examples you want to use, that's kind of what you'll see from Josh Allen. He'll just make a ridiculous play. And it was like, shoot, we can't blitz him that time because he'll just absolutely break contain. Um, I, I, I almost think it's it's one of those things to where how do you determine to slow him down? Don't let him score fast. Don't give up big plays. I mean, they're all cliches, right, guys? Like, those are pretty big cliches. Right. Um, but you do have to treat him like you are playing a top three or four quarterback. Like, you can't assume yeah. that you're going to get turnover Josh or, or hero ball Josh to assume, you know, for, for assumptions purposes that he's that he's Patrick Mahomes. And how you would play Patrick Mahomes right now is how you would want to play Josh Allen. He's been that good. I mean, he is... He showed it even against a team when they didn't even need to win last week that he's still hitting John Brown deep and he's still making great plays. I mean, you can't just cover digs, and that's the problem that def- defenses are coming into. If we cover digs, Beasley, if he plays, or Gabe Davis, or John Brown, Isaiah McKenzie are wide open um, because we focus too much on digs. And I'm like, shoot, we can't do that. So we need to make sure that, um, you know, Cole Beasley isn't beating us and they make that adjustment. And now he's Stefan Diggs is one on one again. Um, so it, it's, it's incredibly tough. I think you need to try to confuse him. That's that's the best thing that I can say is, is treat him like Patrick Mahomes, but at the same time, you know, maybe a little bit if you were playing Tua or Kyler Murray, you know, what can we do to make sure he doesn't break contain and run? Because if he does get really flat, you know, when Josh Allen's flustered, guys, when he's running. So if Josh Allen's running, um, not on a called run, that's different. If they call a run to him, completely different. But if he's running when it was a clear, you know, he's going through his progressions, he's can he's flustered. Um, he'll still make plays and he'll still run 10, 12 yards. Take that. Take it all day. If Josh Allen's running, and even though it's frustrating and he might run for 14 yards, make a first down, and you're like, ah, oh, we can't stop Josh Allen. Take that as a good sign because he's frustrated. He's not seeing his receivers. And that's the Josh Allen you saw. Rookie Josh Allen, really great running the ball. Sophomore year, Josh Allen, the same thing. If he's running the ball, also he's a propensity to put the ball on the ground. Everyone thinks he throws picks. He really doesn't. Um, he's, you know, he has a fair amount of interceptions. A lot of them are bobble. Some of them weren't his fault. Um, just like any quarterback, but he doesn't have a problem turning the ball over. Um, it is though where we stopped seeing him run. He put the ball on the ground a lot. I mean, he'll try to fight for extra yards, knock the ball right out, and he'll, he'll stop running. He'll stop running quickly. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that you want to see. If you see Josh Allen running, it'll be frustrating for Colts fans to say, this is annoying. You know, this is, you know, like we're playing Kyler Murray here and you'll be frustrated, but know that that's a good sign. No early on. That's a good sign. Even though you probably don't think it is. If he's running the ball, that means the ball is not in Diggs' hands. It's not on Beasley's hands. He, they're not one-on-one with DBs. Uh, it's a very good sign. Make him run the ball. I, I don't know. I still like the variable plan, even though Josh has been really good at it lately. Drop players. Like you have a good pass rush. Don't send extra people. Send three if you have to, but drop players. Make him go through his progressions. Make him take 10. Make him take eight. If he is, well, it is what it is. That means he's zoned in, locked in. You're not going to stop him anyways, but at least I think that that's a much better game plan than trying to come after him, being frustrated, and him torching you. I think that's the way to beat him. Make him make easy throws like Tom Brady takes the six yards all day, all game, if he has to. Josh Allen's shown that he will. Make him do it, though, and that's what I'd like to see the Colts' defense do. If they don't do that, 
it's prop my opinion it's not the right game plan so we'll see if if they will say you know we have a good pass rush thrush three rush four drop into zones and if he's really torching you there you make adjustments but that's the best way that i will see um i think the colts can slow him down I really like that game plan. I honestly think that's exactly what they need to do. You're right. You'd rather keep the ball in the quarterback's hands, even if it means giving up a few yards, yep. than getting it to guys like Diggs and Beasley who can make guys look look silly in coverage. You're right. And that's exactly what Eberflus tries to do. He likes to mix up the zones, likes to you know make sure you're only bringing th four th or three or four of them. And then, you know, we're pretty good at keeping contain and the yep. linebackers are really fast too. So I don't have a problem with, you know, the uh, keeping a potential spy on Josh Allen too. Cause I know Okariki or Leonard definitely is capable of making a tackle on Josh Allen at the line. So that makes sense. Um, let's talk about the rushing attack here. I mean, obviously the bills are known mostly for passing, but you guys definitely have a solid rushing attack. No question. But you are going up against the number two rushing defense in all of the NFL. The only team that does better in yards per game currently is the Buccaneers. And the Colts are, are sitting at number two. Both teams not super great, though, at stopping uh, when it comes to rushing touchdowns. Colts are in the middle of the pack at 14th with 16 touchdowns given up. And the Bills are actually 27th with 21. So, you know, both teams not super great at stopping for rushing touchdowns, but are you confident at all that, you know, this team's going to be able to establish a key run game with Singletary and these other guys? Or do you think that might just come with Josh Allen making a few plays of his own on his feet? Yeah, it'll come with the latter for sure. But the bigger thing is it comes back to that matchup. Will the Bills decide to run the ball if they drop into those zones? I mean, Kansas City ran all over the Bills when the Bills employed that same game plan that I just talked about. Casey ended up winning it late. Um, but if they drop into that game, can, can the Bills effectively run the ball? They've shown to be able to when they need to. And that's something that I like to say is that if they don't need to run it, why would you run it? Just like if if you don't need to throw it, I guess, in, in an alternative game, why, why throw it? I mean, if you can run down their throats, college football, whatever it is, I don't know. Stop throwing the ball. Um, and it's kind of kind of the same thing here is that if they see progressive matchups that they like on the outside, they're going to continue to throw the ball. Brian Dable is going for a head coaching job. The last thing Brian's going to want to do is come out against the Colts and look awful because guess what? You know, if he's looking at the Chargers job, the Jets job, I'm not sure which one she wants, which one she doesn't want and where he ranks in the considerations for any of that. But he's a top candidate um, for what he's done with Josh. And there's absolutely no reason that he's going to want to come out and overthink this. He's been really good at mixing it up to the point where even media members, even fans that follow this closely, podcasters have no idea what he's going to do play to play a lot of game to game, like, like nothing. Uh, he, he'll come out and he'll take a small victory against the chargers because he said he liked the running matchup. So I don't know if he'll see that against the Colts and be like, they're expecting us to throw it. It's their strength. And I'm just going to come run it. Cause they're going to do what I said. And they're going to drop into those zones that we just talked about in the last little bit. Now I'm going to run the ball with Devin Singletary, who's more than effective and more than able to. He's really good last year. Um, and the, the Bills offensive line's fairly good. I don't think it's as good as the Colts, but it's pretty good. It's a pretty good offensive line, especially since they mix and matched a few things. It's not perfect. They love their tackle play. They love their tackle play. Had a little issues interior, um, but they love their tackle play. And they particularly love pass blocking. So does that mean they just come out and throw? Yeah, it's easy to say that they will. Um, but at the same time, the way that... The, if they do drop that, that employment, it's all based on that's what makes Brian Dable a potential uh, head coaching candidate. It's ability to adjust. If the Colts do employ that def defense that I'm thinking they should to stop Josh Allen, if Devin Singletary beats you, just kind of like what I said on the other side, if if your second receiver beats it is, I mean, okay. If Devin Singletary beats you, I think you did everything right. I mean, it's just probably an unfortunate uh, luck and, and the Bills were able to play a little bit better defense or something. That's what you want, though. I mean, if you're dropping in those zones and you see Devin Singletary run for five yards, like I said, with Josh running the ball, I think that's a win for the Colts. And I think that puts him right in a game they want him to be in. So drop those players, drop into zones, drop into deep zones, make Josh take short passes, play starters, drive starters, and make Devin Singletary or Zach Moss beat you if they do. Just like, like, like I said, if the Bills will lose on the other way. Okay, at least I think you did your job, though. Yeah, it's funny. It kind of seems like what our game plan should be offensively are like the complete opposite because it's like <laughs> the Colts' strength is running it, the Bills' strength is yep. passing it. It's kind yep. of interesting. So yep. uh, 
that'll be something to definitely monitor um, how they approach defensively against each other. So, all right, Kevin. Well, before we let you go, man, we always do this with every single one of our guests on here. We got to get a score prediction and it's okay. If you choose the bills, I mean, we've, we've uh, chosen our <laughs> team a lot and we've even chosen the other team on, on occasion. So uh, I'm curious your thoughts on the final score for this game. This one's tough because you know what? I'm still early in my process watching a little bit of the Colts. Um, and I think, like I mentioned earlier, I think they're better than a lot of seven seeds would be in normal years. Um, a lot of times it might be an eight and eight team a team that shouldn't be in there. A team that's not very good. Um, I think the, the Colts present enough challenges to a team. The bills aren't happy about. I think they would love to see the Browns, the dolphins again. Um, I, those, those are matchups they would have loved to see. Um, beside the Ravens, I think the Colts weren't, ideally who they'd wanted to see here just because I think they have a good enough defense to put some pressure on. I think it's a close game and I think it comes down to some of those secondary benefits we talked about on the show. Can the Colts get that passing game going? Do you see, you know, their secondary options show up and if they do, that's a good sign. If the Bills get that running game going, does Devin Singletary show up? That's a good sign for the Bills because although it's the Colts game plan, that still means they're being effective running the ball. So um, I do have a Bills win just because I think they have something to prove. It has less to do with the Colts um, and more to do with Josh Allen's on a mission. The team needs to show that they've they've checked off every box, winning multiple games on primetime, beating multiple good opponents, um, You know, being right up there with the top considerations. And I think that they feel v- really kind of burned that they have the year of the two versus seven matchup. Um, and it's at home. I think that might be a little bit of a challenge um, for the Colts. Um, there'll be some fans there and there'll only be 7,000, but I expect them to make as much of a impression as humanly possible for that few of fans, um, especially since we've hadn't had them yet. But I do have a kind of a scoring game. I have a 31 to 28 final for the for the Bills. I've been 15 and one picking the Bills, guys. I will pick them to lose if I need to. I uh, picked them loser the uh, Cardinals. Didn't predict a Hail Mary, um, but did predict that um, that loss. I think that they can do enough to get it done. And Josh Allen needs to show that he's top two, top three in MVP voting. You can't lose this game if that's if that's what you're thinking. And I think the Bills have a lot to prove. Um, not winning games since a uh, playoff game since the '90s. So um, I think it's kind of the Colts are catching the Bills at a really hot time. I do think the Bills would take care of most teams in this situation. So, but I do think there's a path for the Colts. Very easy path for the Colts for a victory. It's not. I'm not sitting here saying 31-28. Happy about it. I think that there's a, a path that if a couple things go a different way could be the opposite 31 28 indie um so uh, i'm probably not as confident as most 13 and 3 bills fans if they got you on here i mean i have fans 41 10 and all this garbage um it's not smart they're just being emotional it's 31 28 and i have that just because the bills were able to show that josh allen's probably the best player on the field but could it go to jonathan taylor very well might <laughs> Yeah, hopefully Bills Mafia is a little uh, a little nicer to us than some of the other uh, fan bases that have come into our comment section and on our live streams <laughs> talking a lot of crap about our team. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is ironic that all of these teams that are in front of us, the Ravens, the Browns, the Titans, and the Steelers, we've all faced them. If we had faced any other uh, team out there, we would have at least had some kind of advantage because we've seen them before. But, you know, it's kind of one of those things where the Buffalo Bills and the Colts, we've not played each other for a while, so we don't know really what to expect. I mean, we've watched the game film, but what is everybody going to do to try to counteract it? So I think this is going to be a very high-scoring game. Despite how the defenses uh, play with each other, I honestly think that this could turn out to be a very high-scoring game. Yeah, And I hate to do this. I really do. I really hate to do this because it's Colts podcast. I will ride or die for my team. And I am still praying that they win uh, this game, but I do have to be a realist. I do have to try my hardest to make it seem like I'm being honest. So 35 to 31 Buffalo here Uh, again, I think it's going to be close. I think Indy has every opportunity to win this game. Like you said, things can flip flop. I think there'll be a couple of turnovers in this game for each side, but I I just don't know. I don't know how the Colts are going to slow down this passing attack. I really don't know how. I'm I'm still praying to God that they do it. I mean, I know a couple Colts actually watch this podcast, and I hope that, you know, (laughs) when they listen to me and they know that I'm not counting them out completely, I'm just making an observation. But right now, I just, I think Buffalo is just the better team at the moment, just by a little. Hmm. 
Yeah, I got to go the same. 35-27, I got the Bills winning too. Like, we, we're going to be as homerish as we want at certain points, but, like, let's be real here. Like, Buffalo is the hottest team outside of Kansas City in the AFC. So, like, Josh Allen's incredible, and we have struggled a lot recently to stop the pass. Um, the thing is, though, that I will say is that the Colts have done a really good job at points allowed. Like, they've done a really good job in the red zone. They've done a really good job outside of maybe the second half of that Pittsburgh game. They've done a really good job at, you know, you know, maybe Deshaun Watson throws for 350 yards, but he only scores 20 points, like I mentioned earlier. So I think maybe potentially if the Colts red zone defense uh, gets back to where it's been, I think they could have a lot better chance than we think um, in this matchups. But I still I still believe that the Bills are on a mission, like you said, Josh Allen's with easily top three quarterback in this league right now. So and, um, and Cody, yeah. I got to say one more thing here, man. I will Go say this. It. The, the Colts, please use this for motivation. Please. The top 10 playoff expert picks on ESPN, every single one of them, Bills, Bills, Bills. I don't like Every that. single one of them. Not a single person <laughs> thinking the Colts will win in like this that. game. So, I mean, pull off the upset. Colts, please. Make Bill's oh, Mafia yeah. upset, please. Make the national like media the upset, way. please. We like it the other way when people are picking San Francisco for no reason against the Bills didn't make any sense. <laughs> the Bills do fuel there, guys. I think it's I think it's I think it's gonna be a good game. And like I said, if if you have yeah. Colts people that listen, we have Bills um, you know, Bills members that listen to our show. And I just hope they they listen. I mean, I thought that the, the um, Titans game plan was really good. I mean, I hate Mike Vrabel. I hate everything about that team. You guys probably do more than me. Bills fans aren't, you know, we just have this tiff with Titans fans, but they did put a good game plan together. And even if it it's the best game plan I think you can put together, if Josh Allen beats it, I personally mean that means he was zoned in and would have beat most anything that day. Make him throw short passes, drop into zones, and don't be frustrated if he runs for 10 yards and does a first down sign. Who cares? At the end of the yep. day, who cares? Like, yep. don't let him beat you with digs all day and all game, and because he will 15 times to digs. Make him beat you on the ground. Don't even spy him. I'd rather you drop into zone. Well, I wouldn't rather you, but I, I'm saying for their purposes, drop into those zones. If he, if he beats you a couple times around the edge, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I, I think I look back a couple of years ago to when we played Kansas City. Now, I know Kansas City was missing a couple of their guys, but I think yeah. a similar game plan is what the Colts need to do here, like you said, like in order to stop this. Because if they can get him flustered early on, maybe he gets back into some of those bad habits we saw his rookie year, his second year, all that kind of stuff, panics a little bit. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen? And, uh, you know, the same with, with Phillip Rivers. You know, if you guys <laughs> are able to take away our running game, uh, we saw it when Phillip Rivers has to throw up 40 times. Normally, it doesn't really go well for us. So uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see which defense takes advantage the best there. But uh, all righty, Kevin. Well, thank you so much, man, for coming on in this game. And like we say to all our guests, good luck on su on uh, Saturday. I always say Sunday. Good luck on Saturday, but not too much luck. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. I really like to say I think we got the shaft of a time slot for as good as this game potentially oh, could be. Government's still open. Banks are still open. It's not a good time slot. Bill's Mafia has been arguing about it all week about how bad it yeah. is. And others are same, like, it's an advantage. Same here, too. AFC South, every year, we are always the early slot on, on Saturdays. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. It really is. And Third meanwhile, in a row, we, we the NFC out. East gets a primetime game. Isn't that great? It's awful. I mean, it's we just saw the ramifications of that with the team looking awful. But we played yeah. the AFC South three games in the three out of the last four seasons in the playoffs. So wow. um, it's we played all three of you, um, and then the Titans. <laughs> they could match up against the Titans in the next round. So it's bizarre. That's all the Bills have been playing is the AFC South, and then the Music City Miracle '99. Um, that's yeah. all we've been playing is the AFC South, and it's just unfortunate. I think this game deserves bigger lights. Doesn't really matter, but I'll go out saying that I think it. I think this game could be one of the better ones of the weekend compared to some of this other trash that we might see uh, with the other five games. I agree. Yes, 100%. All righty. Well, that'll do it for this one, guys. For Derek and myself, thanks so much. Thank you, Kevin, once again. And as always, go Colts.